good morning to you all. This is my presentation on the topic information processing theory. So at the end of this lecture, you will be able to describe the processes involved in acquiring, storing, and retrieving knowledge and cite educational implications of the theory of information processing. Let's start this lecture by comparing our human brain to that of a computer. Many scientists, theorists actually, compared our human brain to the computer because they have really similarities, like they have the ability to encode information, to store information, and to retrieve information. Right? And it, just like computer, our brain also also has this limitation, okay? So if it's in a computer, the computer has this memory full, sometimes our brain also experiences that one, okay? For example, if you're listening to a one-hour lecture in which the lecture, lecture talks about a lot of topic, okay? Sometimes we cannot really grasp the information anymore because it's overloaded, okay? Actually, the scientists who, uh, I mean, the inventors, right, who invented computers likened the computer to that of a human brain, right? It, it will be a device. They said that it will be a device to help humans solve problems. So it really functions. It also functions like human brain, okay? So what is IPT or information processing theory? So it states that it's a learning that is, in, it, that is an internal process. So it opposes the idea of behaviorists, right? In which they say that there must be a reinforcement so that learning will occur. There must be a conditioning that should be done so that learning will occur. Well, for, for, for information processing theory, it's purely internal. It's purely a cognitive process okay so it focuses on how we receive perceive store and retrieve information we have these types of knowledge first we have the general versus specific to uh, illustrate this one i want you to think of your uh, general subjects okay general courses in college so for example you have purposive communication all right um, across degrees, across uh, colleges, it is being studied, right? So no matter who you will who you will become in the future, whether you'll become a teacher, an entrepreneur, um, an IT specialist, a criminologist, you need the knowledge in purposive communication because we are going in the future. We're going to communicate, to conduct business with other people, and knowing how to communicate in a certain context is very important. So that's a general knowledge, guys, okay? Because your knowledge to propose of purposive communication can be used in different tasks, okay? While your knowledge in your um, specific subject or your specialized subject is called, yes, it's called specific knowledge, okay? Because it can also, it can only be In that particular field, definitely fields, right? Field of criminology. So that's a specific knowledge. All right. Next is declarative. So it's about fact. Well, knowledge, or right? factual. Right? So this could be in a form of a word, for example, uh, your, the name of your crush, for example, your, the name of your, the, your actor, for example, when you were. So these are declarative, uh, this is a declarative knowledge, okay? It's about factual uh, knowledge, all right? Next type of knowledge is procedural. So from the word itself, procedural, procedural it requires a process. Okay, for example, how to do things, how to cook, right? How to cook adobo, for example, how to write a lesson plan, 
Okay? So it requires a step-by-step -step process. So this is a procedural knowledge. Alright? Next is episodic. This includes memories of life events. So probably your memories during your, your high school graduation, your high school ball, your first, uh, your first job, right? So these are episodic knowledge. Conditional. So this is actually about the strategy of knowing when and how and what and why uh, you're going to apply declarative. procedural strategies okay so and what, uh, whether it's all right um we have also these stages in the information processing theory so ipt involves the functioning of first senses okay because there's nothing in the mind as as the statement goes there's nothing in the mind that first come comes to our senses all right so it will be perceived first by our senses before it will be stored in our mind okay we also have the sensory register okay once it's it's perceived then it will go to our sensory register and will either go to our short-term memory or long-term memory depending on the situation okay later on we'll learn we'll know uh, why certain information goes only to our short-term memory and why some uh, goes to our long-term memory so primary stages in IPT first encoding information is sensed perceived and attended to okay you'd like to uh, accentuate the word attended to all right so in order for you to know to store information you have to really give an attention of something so that it will be perceived and it will really uh, store in our uh, in our mind okay that's encoding all right the initial step next next is storage information is stored for either a brief or extended period of time okay, that's when you yeah you store information in your mind and retrieval information is brought back at the appropriate time and activated for use on a current task so if you were able to uh, retrieve information when it's needed it's actually the the true measurement of uh of memory okay or how sharp your memory is okay so for example if you're asked uh, by your teacher and you can recall the information that he or she is asking then you have good memory okay all right so we also have the three stages in the memory process first step in the ip model holds all sensory information for a very brief time so capacity our mind receives a great amount of information but it is more than what our mind can hold or perceive well no one can learn everything right we might sense everything we might perceive everything but not all that we perceive can be stored in our mind because you know it also has its limitation all right duration the sensory register only holds the information for an extremely brief period in order of one to three seconds so it's like uh, the information uh, comes here and goes at goes out here okay so it's only for about one to three seconds there's a difference in duration based on modality so based on the research auditory memory or the things that you know you hear can be perceived or is more persistent than visual or the things you see well i know uh I mean, it, there might be contradiction to this because of um, individual differences theory and learning styles theory. The role of attention. So how important is attention in storing uh, information in our mind? We only perceive and remember th those things that pass our attention gate. So if you Or uh, an attention to when it will be stored in why as teachers we really need to keep the attention of our learners okay um, no matter what happened right it's our main duty 
to get the attention of the learners, all right? How are we going to do that? Well, we have different innovative strategies. We have different, um, we have different methods to do that, right? How are you going to, for example, if you saw your student um, um, not listening, not looking at you, and it seems like your student is, uh, I mean, the mind of your student is actually wondering. It's not on the thing that is being talked in inside the classroom. What are you going to do? Well, some of the teachers might break an ice or they might crack a joke so that they can get the attention of the child, right? Or probably they can tell a story related to the topic so that their the attention will be caught, right? So there are different strategies to do that, actually, okay? But the most important thing here is you have to keep the attention of your students, okay? Um, how do we get the attention of our learners? Um, I think I'll have more discussions about that in my next slides, right? And I'm pretty sure that you also have an answer in mind, okay? You keep that in your mind because probably later on or in your activity, I might be asking those, okay? Let's jump to the next page. Before information is perceived, it is known as pre-categorical pre information. Once it is perceived, we can categorize, judge, interpret, and place meaning to the stimuli. If we fail to perceive, we have no means by which to recognize that the stimulus was ever encountered. So it's very important that you perceive something, right? Once it's perceived according to this slide, then that's the time that you can organize the information that you get. If you were able to, to organize, to interpret it, then the, the more likely that it will store in your long-term memory, okay? All right. Short-term memory um, or working memory, capacity. Chunks of information. The students have only five to nine chunks of information will be stored and after 18 seconds it will be gone okay so what are you going to do think about it teachers what to do to reduce lo loss of memories again I'll be discussing that to the next slide but I want you to ponder on that question guys next is long-term memory permanent storing house Capacity, of course, it's unlimited. In generation, it's indefinite. Okay, so you can easily information or hold to Your to remember something. Okay. Next slide. Executive control process. So also the executive processor or meta called flow of stem. It also about organize the info. Uh, some important consider here. Okay. One thing that really it's the inability to retrieve or access information when needed. That's why sometimes we can ace an exam, we can ace a quiz because sometimes we forget it. Okay? Why do we forget? What are the reasons behind it? First, it's the decay. Information is not a thing. That's why in your are actually listen. Okay, didn't put attention to the lecture or to the lesson at hand, definitely they will not ace, they cannot pass really a quiz or the assessment that you'll be giving because most of them will have this decay or, you know, uh, will forget what uh, they have heard. Okay, next is inter interference new or old information blocks access to the information in question, right? So, just a new information, there's a confusion. There's an interference, then we forget things. Okay, 
sometimes because of a lot of information also that be, that's being restored, stored in, the, in our mind, sometimes we forget. Okay? Methods of increasing retrieval of information. So, what are the things that we have to do? Okay, as teachers, what are the things that you have to let your students do so that they can avoid forgetting? First, we have the re uh, rehearsal. Repeating information verbatim, either mentally or aloud. I still remember our class before when I was in grade 6, right? Um, in memorizing a poem, it's actually very hard for me to memorize a poem. However, our teacher, what our teacher did before is they let us read the poem again and again, again and again, again and again. Okay, we read it actually aloud until it is stored. I mean, it's like automatically that after hearing your voice uh, reading the poem, it's stored in your mind already. It's, it's, it's really, it's automatically stored in your mind. Okay, so you can do that. It's a rehearsal. All right. Next is meaningful learning, making connection between new and prior knowledge. It's easier for you to remember something. If you try to link what's the new information that you learn to the information that you have already know or you or you already know, okay? You try to link the, the, the two so that you can remember it. Okay, organizing your knowledge is very important, which is actually another method in increasing your re increasing retrieval of information. Yes, that's it. Making connections among various pieces of information. Um, if you're if you're confused about it, actually, you can make um, a diagram of that. You can make uh, you can organize it. You can write it actually if you can figure it out through your mind, so that it's easier for you to recognize it or to to remember it. Elaboration. So, um, adding if, uh, additional ideas or new information based on what one already knows. It is connecting new info with all to gain meaning. So, you are now creating meaning. You are now adding meaning to the information that you've got. So, um, for example, if you were asked in, during class discussion, if you were asked a question, okay, and the, for example, you were tasked to expound uh, uh, a statement, for example, and then you were able to expound it, and then you were able to make meaning out of that, right? Now, if you encounter the same question during your quiz or during your exam, it's easier for you to answer it because you put meaning already to that. You already elaborated it, okay? So the most likely that you can remember still. Not, not really verbatim, but, you know, the idea is there, okay? Next slide. Visual imagery, forming a picture of an information. So you can make actually while reading, for example, or while listening, you can make a mental picture of what the teacher is talking about, right? Or what you're reading so that it's easier for you to remember. You, you just have to remember the mental image that was formed in your mind and you can remember already the information. We uh, for example, if you have written for, uh, an essay, uh, for example, Boon and Bane of Technology, if you are given an hour and have written um, an essay out of that, and ask and your teacher asks you to present it, it's actually very easy to present it or discuss it in front because you yourself, you yourself have written the essay, you have already generated ideas out of the topic at hand okay next context remembering the situation helps recover information so if you cannot remember it sometimes ginagawa natin yun for example kapag may nakalimutan tayo what do we do sometimes pumupunta tayo sa mga pinuntahan natin bago natin nakalimutan yung information because the context itself can help you remember it right so in the classroom setting you can probably uh, remember or you could probably try to remember the context what's being talked about so that you can remember the, the, the thing that you're trying to remember or you're trying to retrieve okay personalization it is making the information relevant to individual if you see mean and you make it personalized you saw how important it is to you then it's easier for you to remember it okay so those are the things that you can do
to increase your the retrieval of information you can rehearse it you can make a mental image out of that you can elaborate it you can organize it you can link information you can you know uh, remember you go back to the context and you personalize the information that you receive okay all right next is other memory methods serial position effect it is stated here that what is in the beginning and end are most likely remembered okay nandito na rin yung law of recency and primacy recency means uh, the the most recent thing that was uh, taught or studied can mostly remembered okay and then primacy what was uh 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 taught in the beginning okay will be uh remembered well okay so kaya nga sa speech for example sa speech uh, if you heard the speech, it's actually not the body of the speech which the audience will remember. It's actually the introduction or conclusion or both. Okay? So it's the serial uh, position effect. Part learning. Break up the list of chunk information to increase memorization. So instead of memori memorizing a bulk of information, why don't you chunk it? Okay? Uh, divide it into parts. Okay, so it's easier for you to remember it, to to, uh, to store it in your mind. It's part learning. Then, so um, if you're going to reflect to the part learning uh, for us teachers, um, it only says, it only uh, reminds us that instead of, you know, teaching a bulk of information to students, because sometimes teachers are cramming, right? They try to... Uh, you know, hinahabol nila yung mga lesson na hindi pa natapos. Kasi finals na. Pero most likely dyan, mahihirapan yung mga estudyante. It's because, you know, it's a bulk of information. Right? So, if if it's in high school, in college siguro, yeah, nangyayari yan sa college talaga. Um, nangyayari din yan sa high school elementary, pero mas, I mean, mahihirapan mga nasa high school elementary kasi it's really, you know, uh, it's very hard for them to really grasp information knowing the cognitive level that they still have okay All right remember we have to give input uh, to our learners which is uh, you know which is ap uh, appropriate uh, to their age right so that's it uh, that's that's what we have to consider right uh, the reflection that we can make as teachers all right so next thing that we have to consider is uh, distributed practice break up learning sessions this is also what I was talking about a while ago rather than cramming all information at once if if you're cramming with lessons probably you can make other uh, strategies for you for your students to still learn and to still acquire the objectives of the lesson okay it's not just I mean it's really not effective to cram everything I mean to capsulize all your lessons at once okay next is this is very effective actually when i'm when well I, I i often do this one all right the mnemonic aids it can help learners retain retain and retrieve information more effectively and we have actually plenty of mnemonics that we know well example of that is an acronym for example pemdas which stands for Parenthesis, uh, yeah, parenthesis, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Laser. So most of us might be surprised. Ah, is it an acronym? Yes, it's actually an acronym. Okay, that stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. And scuba. Okay, scuba is also an acronym. All right. So it means self-contained underwater breathing apparatus okay so you can actually organize your lesson okay you can uh you can make an acronym of the thing of the things that you are teaching to your uh to your students especially if it's declarative knowledge okay so that it's easier for them to remember uh the le the information that you've provided so this is the process actually you know we have to consider this all right and we have to reflect on this process so for example uh, this this is how we re how we encode um stores what we want is to target the long-term memory okay 
Of course, we wouldn't like our pupils or our students to forget what we talk about, what we what we discuss to them. Okay, we're just if that's so, then we just uh, you know uh, waste our effort. Okay, in in teaching them. All right. Stimuli could be your lecture or the input, the information that you provide to your pupils. Okay, so it will be uh, uh, it will be sensed. Okay, it will be perceived. Senses, so it will store to your sense. Capacity is you know three to seven units. It's um, during actually you want to uh, 0.5 to three seconds, and then it will be forgotten. All right, unless it is attended. So if, for example, you provide, them, then yeah, they sense the information. They then they put attention to the information. Then it could go to the working memory. All right, the capacity is seven to nine chunks. Duration five, uh, uh, five to fifteen seconds. This is without. Rehearsal, of course, uh, you're not trying the different strategies to increase retrieval of information. Then, after that, without rehearsal, okay, then it will be forgotten. Short, yeah, it's also provided the uh, if you provided activities to your students, right? If you provide strategy if you help students uh, you to, in, to increase their in their in their mind to uh, the long term memory all right so uh, the capacity is infinite it's permanent all right so that's how our human brain works okay that's how we learn based on information and processing. Okay, so again, there's no need for need for reinforcement. There's no need for conditioning. Purely a cognitive. Process. We encode, we store, and we. we retrieve but of course the process will go to is pretty. as a reflection for us teachers of course we'd like our students to remember really or we would like our students to store the information in their long-term memory okay so how are we going to do that well we can do rehearsal mnemonic strategy right and pupils can also or students can also employ these strategies within themselves right they could Right, they could do an elaboration, they could organize the information, they can uh, form a mental picture of what So this is also more of the co uh, metacognitive strategies of the learners so that they can increase the retrieval of information, right? Okay, so with that, I think you're ready to answer the following questions. So first, describe the process involving storing in retrieving well i'll not get your answer you answer that from yourselves okay you can you answer these questions okay so my uh lecture ends there thank you so much for listening guys it's uh add the question in the comment section all right so my reference is Thank you so much. Bye-bye.